Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World Healing Energy Session, whatever you want to call it. I haven't decided on a stable title yet. Uh, for the 10th of October, sorry, 22nd of October, 2024. I love to reverse things with my dyslexic brain. All right, so today we're going to work with... Um, we're going to work with environmental and stress elements that can influence our, let's say, the viral load, or um, we're going to go right down to um, the functioning of the cell and replication of DNA for the immune system. We want our immuno response to be a lot stronger. So we're going to do some cleansing of mold air pollution, and we're going to do foods as well. But you're going to, I mean, they're, they're general stressors like financial stress, house stress, you know, um, well, it can be all your bills and all your payments. There can be health stressors. There can be family health stressors. There can be family stressors. Let's say someone's, um, someone's putting pressure on the family, you know, whether they're mentally ill or they're physically ill, or there could be emotional manipulation within the family. Um, we've also got uh, uh, work stress, right? So career, money, all your bills, et cetera. And then um, career, money, health. We'll do those three. If you've got another one that doesn't fit in those categories, just you know, kind of think about it while we're looking at um, we're looking at the immune system, uh, how it adapts, its adaptability, and what else is coming in environmentally. So the one I'm picking up most on is mold, but that won't, um, it, we won't have any exceptions here to other types of pollutants like dust mites, um, food, you know, there, there's dairy, there's wheat, there's glyphosates, there's um, air pollution, water pollution, there's metals, especially heavy metals or in excess of metals, um, chemicals that are in your food, chemicals that are in your food, chemicals that are in your water, chemicals that are in the air itself. Um, then we have this whole water system in the body. So our H2O needs to be optimized to have nice negatively charged electrons. Um, the best way to antioxidize, so it has been said, is to go barefoot in the sand. Uh, we can't, we're not always that lucky to be able to do it. So, you know, whatever antioxidants that you might be taking. We want to optimize that. And then the third part is to actually help the water remain negatively charged to dispel the, the positive charge so that we get a lot more movement of water. So as I'm doing that, you might even feel that it's already doing something. I'm getting a metallic taste in my mouth. I'm feeling some of those energy burps coming up. I'm feeling something moving in the belly. So we want to get it to go into right through the membrane and get into the cell and really help clean out all of the organelles of the cell so that we can optimize the detoxification of the cell. And just breathe and we'll tap this through. Just really experiencing that energy. And we want to get the maximum amount of oxygen going into the lungs and coming out. Or if you know if you've got lung issues, then you might want to be doing um, holding your breath so you get nitric oxide uh, buildup. And when you have that, it helps the lungs as well. So I've been doing that for about, I think it was almost eight months. And uh, I went from using 
uh, Ventolin uh, twice a day to, I haven't touched it for about three months. So it really, really works well, especially along with our sessions, you know, the work that we're doing and, you know, exercising, eating right, all those things and reducing stressors. All right, so now just think about those stressors you may have. Is it financial, family, you know, it can be relationship, it can be extended family, it can be um, health or any health in the family. And just feel into that or a career, might be your career stress. I'm getting also, you know, a lot of the, those are general stressors that we have. Um, I'm older now, but the younger generation um, has the stress of choices. Um, yeah, that's a, we're going to use that category as well. So, you know, my time and the time before me, we didn't have as many choices. It started coming in, let's say the 60s, 70s was the time that there were a lot more choices. You know, like if you look at just clothing, you have a lot more options than you did uh, in the 60s and 70s. There was always one fashion and then the 80s had a fashion, but soon after the 90s and 2000, you can you can wear clothes of the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and I, you can go back to goth era. You can wear whatever you want, basically. And um, I'm just bringing up such a simple example because choices are really, really stressful. They, they stress out the younger generation. Um, I think we, uh, the older generations might have a little bit of resilience because we've already set up what we like in life and what we choose. So we don't tend to go out there and go, what am I going to choose? You know, the young flexible brain may not know. This is going to include partners in life. So choosing your partner in the old days, you didn't have so much of a choice. You know, it would be your, let's say your religion, your economic status, your, you know, education level, you would already have a chosen. Some Sometimes they were set up, you know, it's around my time that people stopped being uh, set up in, in uh, relationships. You almost knew approximately what pool you would, you would marry, right? So I come from a Greek tradition and you had only a few Greeks, in, in our cities. So you had a very small selection. Everybody knew, you know, approximately they're going to pick one of these people to get married. It wasn't all of the, the city. But now we're, we don't have this, um, you know, cultural group, or we've got the choice of anybody, anywhere, anything. And it becomes more and more stressful to have all these choices. We know very well it's good to give someone a choice, but if you give a little kid, you say, you can sit anywhere, you can do anything, it stresses them out. But if you tell a child you can have this or this, it's enough for them to have the capacity to make a choice without getting stressed. Start giving them more and more choices, especially at certain ages, it's very difficult. But most of us have a really hard time when there are a lot of choices. It starts to be stressful. So we're going to bring that in as one of the, the big stressors for the new generation. So I don't know if anyone who's on here right now relates to that, but your kids might relate to it. Your grandchildren might relate to it, where those choices uh, create some difficulty. Now, if we go in to look at choices, financial stress, health stress, family stress, career stress, school stress would be under... I put it under the auspices of career when someone's in school. We put all these things together and look at your body is going to look, seek out what susceptibility you may or may not have. So the first one that came was mold, but it might be a food. It might be, um, it might be a pesticide. It might be the air. It could even be internal environment. So for those of us who, let's say you live in a hot climate and there's a lot of air conditioning, then that internal environment has certain elements that could be difficult for the lungs and the body. And the, you know, that once you have lung 
issues and breathing issues. You're going to have digestive issues. You're going to have brain issues. You have all kinds of stuff. And then in the Northern hemisphere, you know, we tend to be inside in the winter. So we're going into winter, Southern hemisphere is going into summer. Um, we're going to be closed in. There's a lot more dust, recycled air, that kind of thing. That, and lots of, I don't know how much this, figure out how many people, but I'm sure it, it, whether someone's conscious of it or not, the static that goes along with the heating systems, that's always, um, you know, it's quite, quite interesting what it does to the nervous system and the hydration of the body and our electrons. So yeah, we're doing a really huge session to be able to encompass as many people as possible because there are also humid areas uh, that are going to have a different uh, a different dynamic. They can have lots of mold, but they also there's a lot more sweat and drinking water, and the skin cleanses out quite well, you know. But then there can be heavy levels of air pollution, and the lungs can get heavily laden. I don't know why this is all coming into the lungs, but that's what the session is doing. All right, so just breathe now and allow your body to tune in, whether it's mold, whether it's mites, whether it's just the quality of the air. Sometimes if the air has too much water, it can be hard to breathe with or without pollution. Then there are the pollutants in the air. That one's really strong for me. If I think, uh, if I'm feeling into the pollutants in the air, I feel like my lungs are already opening up, trying to, to balance that. And then we're going to do foods for the creation of infection. Infection can be the mucus that is through the lungs, the, the um, throat, sinus passages, nasal passages, ears, um, underlying the skin a little bit into the, I said lungs, the bronchial bronchi. And there we go, just breathing into that. And we'll do a little bit for the gut brain to be able to determine what to do with uh, environmental poisons. We should be able, like when we're really, really healthy, we should be able to take a poison in and let it go out of the body. But of course, once it becomes cumulative, we have a lot of poisons, it's a lot harder. The body has to struggle a lot more. So maybe just hold your belly now and we're gonna look at the levels of um, toxicity in food. So that's gonna be everything from what the animal eats and the plant eats. So of course it's gonna be pesticides, it's gonna be crossbreeding, I'm not talking about just Mendel and Mendel crossing peas. I'm talking about crossing with things that shouldn't be crossed. Then, of course, we have those microplastics that we've been working with a bit. Uh, I'm just going to work with it as we don't want the microplastic to interfere with our process in the gut brain. I'm not going to work with that right now. So I think it's going to be, from what I'm getting, it's going to be too much for the body to deal with. So we'll just leave that for this week because there are a lot of other things that have gone into our bodies, especially since it comes from air, comes from water, comes from food, whether it's plant, whether it's animal. Because a lot, um, I mean, someone could be vegan um, yeah, and that's all plant-based, of course. Um, vegetarian, you're going to get plant animal because they're not eating animals, but they'll eat butter and cheese, let's say. And then, then we've got people who, who will have a, a general diet. And then there are people who eat junk food. I just need to categorize them all just to help everyone a little bit differently. So for those of you who are vegan, um, I'm getting a strong weakness. So you're not necessarily getting everything you need from your food. And when you're not doing that, it seems to be changing the cellular structure of what your body's trying to do to replicate the proteins. 
And we want to reinforce that. So I'm not telling you to change, but you know, it doesn't mean everyone who's vegan is doing that, but some are a vegan could have, you know, trouble uh, properly replica replicating protein. Then vegetarian, a lot more fighting chance. I feel more robust in there. Um, uh, but that's also going to depend on the individual. And then there are people, there's so many different forms out there. I don't want to go to too many, I, but there is carnivore. And uh, for them, it's really anything that, because um, the, the animal is going to eat the plants and we want to maximize the synthesis of whatever toxins to go out of the body of the animals so that carnivores can get the best. And then we have, you know, Mediterranean diet, then, then I'll just go to junk. So Mediterranean, you know, fresh fruits, mostly fresh vegetables, fresh fish, some meat, um, very Mediterranean, that's very nice. Ah, now cook food. My God, you're giving me so many things, world. Okay, then there's all the cook food people. You know, like uh, if you're eating, like there's there's people who eat rice and let's say a meat that's very popular in lots of areas in Asia. Um, they're usually going to be trim and they don't have too many problems. Um, but once you start adding things like too many sauces, too many things like that, I'm just seeing heart heart issues. Because uh, it's mixing the the carb with the fat. Like we should have fat, but carbohydrate with fat is not good. And carbohydrate, fat, sugar. All right, so this is getting me to look at diabetes on the planet. Huge, huge thing right now. They're even talking about, you know, Alzheimer's being um, just something I've, I've read and heard. I, I don't have the reference. You can look it up. Uh, that diabetes uh, is part of the precursor to Alzheimer's. They're talking about many, many, many diseases being part of diabetes or high blood sugar. So I'm just going to do sugar to the planet. So I'm, I'm just feeling like there's a navel of the, the entire planet where I can put sugar in their diabetes as a problem and just help people, um, you know, just have a better sense of what their gut brain wants them to eat. What their gut brain, what our, it's me too, my gut brain wants me to eat. If you're anything like me, I have no idea what to eat and when half the time I don't even in, enjoy my food. You know, like it's just the weirdest, weirdest thing. Um, but we need that energy obviously to live I'm very stressed right now whatever's going on uh, on the planet with food is very heavy and it's running through the the top of the thymus gland here so how much influence it has on the lungs on the heart on the thyroid on the thymus gland just really really heavy and there's something going on in the belly as it's moving through so I'm just going to connect it to the immune system and to the um, to the gut brain. And the gut brain is really for the refinement of choosing what you need to eat based on what your, your gut brain wants you to eat, not what this wants you to eat, not what, you know, like when you think about what you want to eat and you have all kinds of thoughts about it, uh, that's one thing, but your body might not care, right? It just doesn't care what you think you should eat like somebody says you know i haven't had a chocolate bar for a while i'm going to have a chocolate bar but they're diabetic and they you know like i'm going to give myself a treat well maybe that's not so great maybe there could be something else you know a person can have We're, we constantly convince ourselves that something is okay to to eat um that's fine but uh, meaning it's okay what you i don't know how to express it like 
if your gut brain says it, but if this brain is telling you that's not going to be fine, if your gut brain is going, I really want that little, that piece of chocolate, you'll probably do really well. But if your head says, oh, you know, I haven't had chocolate for a while and I'm going to, that's not, that's not your gut brain. That's your greedy brain, let's say. Okay. So we're just helping it. For those of you who struggle with diabetes, struggle with gastro problems, struggle with um, belly problems, struggle with fat. This is, this is a great link, you know. Uh, even sinus issues can often be affiliated with food. Uh, lungs, uh, uh, high blood pressure often is affiliated with food, right? That, that, you know, the belly, especially for men, belly gets big and uh, blood pressure goes high. So we just really want the body to tell us, eat this. It would be nice if it was nice and clear, nice and clear. Just eat this and you're going to be fine. Whatever that thing is, even if it's a brick, I want it to tell me what to eat. So I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to look at the fridge and go, what should I eat? And what, what's going to be good? That, that tells me my gut brain is not, not operating. And I think a lot of us don't have a really good uh, gut brain operation. You know, I, I think it's not working very well. All right, let's tap that through. Now I want to bring that, as I said, to the immune system. Somebody, when we started talking about what this session would be like, uh, someone mentioned virus. So that will also come in as the viral load. We want to make sure that, you know, the gut brain's working properly. We have proper nutrition. The body's detoxifying. Water is coming in. Oxygen is coming in. Exercise, right? We need exercise. If you can exercise, exercise. I know there's some people out there who have other difficulties, like if you're missing a leg and you know, or you can't walk because of extra pain, etc. You know, I understand, but um, you know, hopefully you'll get some help for that. But keep something moving, you know, keep yourself active, keep your brain active, keep your arms active. You know, if you can't move your legs, if you can't move your arms, just sit in a chair and move your legs. Find something that keeps you breathing. Um, I think fresh air, sunshine, hugging a tree, uh, like Florence Nightingale said, the best thing is sunlight and fresh air. She was the one who said, get all the patients outside into the fresh air, into the sunlight. And, you know, that's really what we we absolutely need as part of our lives. Um, especially for people who are experiencing, you know, viral stuff, sinus stuff, we need to do that. And, you know, lower your stress levels as much as you can. Lower those stress levels. Um, yeah, of course, go to your doctor for, for whatever you need. I'm just here as an, as an addition to everything that you do. Remember, it's always good to be holistic, not to be, uh, you know, secular, I guess you could call it, not believing one thing or another. You need to examine the whole thing and see what's going on. So I don't keep anything out and I don't uh, I don't just take everything. Got to just check and see out of everything in the world what's going to be best for you. And you decide that with your medical doctor. Um, what else? I think that's good. All right, my loves, we'll have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye.